Hi friends, I am Dr. Sharma and in this part of urethral trauma video lecture I would be discussing etiopathogenesis of posterior urethral injury. The objective of this particular talk is to describe the etiology of posterior urethral injury and to describe the various theories which describe this and to understand the mechanism of this particular injury. Well, the etiology of any injury is very simple, it has to be trauma and in case of urethral injury, the commonest cause is blunt trauma and in this also the commonest cause is a vehicular road traffic accident or a fall from a height. Nearly all these injuries that is posterior urethral injuries are associated with pelvic fracture and we need to remember that whenever there is a pelvic fracture it's a severe force which has been exerted on the body and hence there is a chance that there are many associated other organ injuries also. We need to remember the rule of 10 in these cases. 10% of pelvic fractures are associated with posterior urethral injury and 10% of posterior urethral injuries have associated bladder rupture. Hence we need to remember that sometimes both urethral and bladder injuries both can be associated. Now which type of pelvic fracture causes this posterior urethral injury? A straddle fracture which is also called as a butterfly fracture where all the four pubic rami are disrupted is one of the types of fracture which can cause this injury. Likewise a malgagnes fracture where there is fracture of the ischiopubic rami but also that of the sacrum and the sacroiliac joint can cause this injury. Now there has been recent debate regarding the fact that whether pelvic fracture is the correct terminology. Now this debate started from the fact that we have understood that the classical injury of a posterior urethral trauma is at the level of the bulbomembranous junction where the membranous urethra passes through the perineal membrane which is away from the site of the fracture which means that this injury tends to occur because of a shearing force which is exerted in that area and is thus not due to a fracture per se but is due to disruption of the pelvic ring and the pelvic ring is made up of bones as well as the ligaments. Hence the correct terminology is pelvic ring disruption and not pelvic fracture. So a posterior urethral injury is classically called as a posterior urethral distraction injury and is on account of a pelvic ring disruption and not a pelvic fracture. What are the types of pelvic ring disruption? It could be a stable, a rotationally unstable but vertically stable or it could be rotationally and vertically unstable pelvic ring disruption. Now urethral injury occurs when there is pelvic ring disruption which is rotationally unstable particularly if it is associated with a lateral compression injury. It will not occur with a stable pelvic ring injury. And along with pelvic fracture in the anterior part there is always some disruption of the ligaments affecting the sacroiliac joint posteriorly. It's very easy to understand that whenever a urethra is injured, there are various forces which are acting on that particular segment of the urethra which is injured and these forces act in opposite and various different directions and because of the push and pull that tends to occur, the trauma or the distraction injury occurs. What is the mechanism of injury? The shearing force avulses the apex of the prostate from the membranous urethra where the membranous urethra is fixed in the place by the urogenital diaphragm. This is the classical description of the mechanism of a posterior urethral trauma. It is very classically described as that a apple has been plucked up from the tree. Here the apple is the prostate which has been plucked up and the place where it is attached is the attachment of the membranous urethra to the urogenital diaphragm. Now there are three mechanisms for this particular type of injury which have been described by Pokorny. 
the first mechanism is that there is upward displacement of one hemi pelvis and symphysis as occurs in a malgaignis fracture where there is fracture of the ischio pubic rami along with some disruption of the sacrum and the sacroiliac joint it could be on account of a free floating central symphysial segment which is displaced posteriorly that occurs in a straddle fracture where all the four pubic rami are fractured or in pubic symphysis diastasis there is stretch of the membranous urethra till it ruptures so these are three different mechanisms described by pokorny but the newer view is very interesting it says that there is a partial or complete avulsion of the membranous urethra from the fixed bulbous urethra at the bulbo membranous junction and this occurs distal to the external sphincter now we know that the membranous urethra is the least supported part of the urethra because it is not supported by spongiosal tissue the bulbar urethra is the fixed area now when there are shearing forces which are acting on that particular segment of the bulbo membranous junction the tear tends to occur now what is interesting is that the tear occurs distal to the external sphincter which means that in many cases the external sphincter will be intact and if due care is exercised during the surgical correction of this particular injury then the incidence of incontinence would be much less because the injury is distal to the external sphincter and the sphincter is preserved in many of these cases now why urethra is not ruptured in 90% of pelvic fractures i had described initially the rule of 10 where 10% of the times in association with pelvic fracture there is a urethral injury which means that urethra is not ruptured 90% of the times now if the pubo-prostatic ligaments are ruptured in the middle or are avulsed from their bony attachments away from the site of the attachment to the urethra the urethra is spared however if the pubo-prostatic ligaments are ruptured closer to their attachment to the urethra there would be a partial or complete tear of the urethra now 90% of the times when there is a pelvic fracture the pubo-prostatic ligaments are avulsed closer to their bony attachments and away from their attachment to the urethra and hence urethra is spared in 90% of these cases now many of these cases i have also associated bladder neck injury this is basically a vertical tear of the prostatic urethra and the bladder neck the prostatic urethra is primarily affected and the bladder neck and the membranous urethra are then affected secondarily this is more common in children especially prepubertal males as the post prostate is not well developed and hence is unable to support the prostatic urethra in a proper way friends the next part will be dealing with clinical features of patients with urethral trauma for more such videos log on to admedonline.com